Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on what's expected to be a very hot and sticky day. My name is Everett Lott, and I am the Acting Director for the District's Department of Transportation. I'm excited to be here with all of you today to help provide a better and more clear understanding of how we ensure that our bridges and our tunnels remain safe for all residents and visitors to use every day. Today we are here at the H Street Northeast Bridge, also known as the Hopscotch Bridge. Thanks to Mayor Bowser's commitment to transportation safety, we are designing a brand new bridge that will not only advance our work to bring our infrastructure to a state of good repair, but will also support the expansion of one of our region's busiest transportation hubs, Union Station. The H Street Bridge is one of 212 vehicular bridges, 26 pedestrian bridges, and 15 tunnels that DDOT owns and maintains. This bridge is currently at level four rating. I am proud to say that because of Mayor Bowser, she has prioritized and invested in our infrastructure of the 238 bridges in our inventory there are only five bridges that are rated level four, which is considered poor condition according to federal and district standards. We currently have no bridges in our inventory rated lower than a rating four. While this bridge is scheduled for complete replacement, we want to be clear that a bridge that is rated in poor condition is safe for vehicles and for pedestrians to use every day. Again, I repeat, a bridge that is rated four is safe for vehicles and for pedestrians to use every day. When a bridge receives a four on its biennial inspection, that triggers the DDOT team to begin making plans for replacement. But I want to reiterate, it is still safe for pedestrians and for vehicles to use. The professionals who inspect our bridges evaluate a number of factors that determine the bridge's rating. During this process, our professionals examine the condition of the bridge deck, the superstructure, and the substructure based on criteria that are laid out in local and federal guidelines. After the inspection, DDOT receives an extensive report of the status of the bridge and recommended repairs. Then DDOT immediately makes the necessary repairs. I want to thank you so much for your time today, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Sam. I think you're in their way. <laughs> where, where are the four bridges, the number four bridges you said, the ones that, uh, those are the, in the worst shape in D.C.? Yeah, we have two bridges that we're actually right now under construction and renovation now, South Capitol Street and the Suitland Parkway. And those will be, actually one was already repaired and the other one will be repaired and completely demolished um, when we finish the uh, South Capitol Street Bridge, Frederick Douglass Bridge project this summer. Um, we also have Benning Road, uh, Anacostia Suitland, and the TR Bridge, excuse me, thank you. I'm sorry, I missed that. What did you say? The TR Bridge, the Teddy Roosevelt Bridge. Teddy Roosevelt Bridge, that's the one over the Potomac? Correct. That's the number four? Yes. And you said uh, Benning Road, is that the Ethel Kennedy Bridge? Benning Road, is that Ethel Kennedy? It's the ramp leading up to Kenilworth Avenue. I see. One thing I was also interested in, uh, Director, um, what update can you give us about the situation on 295 at this point? Well, what I can say is that our team quickly responded, got an emergency response uh, mode, and we're able to get the, um, the bridge removed and the, sh the roadway reopened within about 10 or 11 hours. Uh, we are now evaluating what we will be doing in terms of um, the replacement of the bridge. Um, what we do have also to note is that the Nash Bridge is only about a thousand feet from the, the lane bridge that was actually hit by the, uh, the truck. So we do have that particular access for residents in those communities to, be able to, uh, to uh, go back and forth across the highway. And what assurance do you have for the residents? And I noticed there are, I think, three bridges left, right? Three of these pedestrian bridges left over. What, what assurance can you give the residents that those bridges are safe? What assurance can you give residents that the three bridges that remain over 295 in Northeast are safe? Again, our inspects, we, we inspect our bridges on an annual, biannual basis every two years. Um, and anything that has a rating four or less than we will respect more frequently and more regularly. And so this bridge that you're here and seeing today, we're actually doing inspection because we want to make sure that we're doing a more annual, regular routine of inspection. Now, in the case of the bridge that collapsed, was it rated four? 
the, the it was a rated four. Um, some of the other components were rated five, but the, the the rating is an overall rating, so it did get the poor condition. But again, I want to reiterate that it was safe for vehicular usage, also for pedestrian usage. In this case, since it's a pedestrian bridge, it was safe for pedestrians to build across. And so, are you committed to replacing that bridge? You sound like you're not sure whether you'll actually replace the bridge or not. Yeah, Mark, we're, we're evaluating everything right now. What I can say is that we do know that the Nash Bridge is less than 1,000 feet from where the Lane Bridge was um, knocked down by the, by the vehicle. So that is available access point right now. We also have the uh, Minnesota Avenue underground tra uh, trail that goes to the Minnesota Avenue uh, station. And then, it, it, and I'm, I apologize if, if this is already publicized on your website, but can you just provide us a list of the ratings of every single bridge and tunnel that you have so we know what they are? Is that readily available to anybody who looks on your online to find that? I think we can provide that to you, and I think it is available. Is it on our website? I believe it is on the website, Mark. But you can provide that to us sure. so we can we can have a list of that. And, and then... Um, do you know how many people cross that bridge on a daily basis, or do you have that breakdown for those bridges that go across 95 and the one that is down? Yeah, we do know that Lane Bridge was probably the bridge that was used most infrequently, and we had about 11 uh, users per day. Um, and some of our other bridges across the uh, 295, we had roughly about 1,100. So we do that that bridge was, was not used regularly. So I, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. So the bridge that collapsed, you counted only 11 people per day using that bridge? Correct. But the other bridges? Not the, one of the other bridges had approximately 1,100 that was leading up to one of the metro spots. Okay, thank you. Uh, oops, sorry. I understand that the cost of replacing this bridge is something like $200 million, is that correct? And correct. will take a number of years. If this is one of like more than 200 bridges in the city, how will you guys ever afford to replace? Uh, they're all getting old to keep up. I mean, is it an awful looking 20 years down the road to find the money to replace these one after another? Well, what I can say is that, again, just in this budget alone, the mayor has really made a major investment to make sure that our roadways, our bridges, and our tunnels are in a state of good repair. And so this has already been budgeted for. Um, it's $215 million for this particular bridge. And as I had mentioned earlier, of the 234 bridges, only five that are in poor condition. So we feel very good about the maintenance program and what we've been doing to make sure that our bridges remain in a state of good repair. What is the rating? Of, oh. What is it the, the, thank you, sorry about, could you uh, just uh, describe a little bit more about what is it that makes a bridge that is rated poor still uh, realistically safe for, for, for drivers uh, on, on a daily basis? And actually I'll turn to our chief engineer and ask him to answer that question. No? Okay, we have different type of categories. The rating goes from zero to nine. So once a bridge hits four or below, we call it poor but poor itself have different categories. So if you're zero, that's lane bridge, it collapsed. One, you, you close it for uh, vehicular or any transportation purposes. Two is serious, you should consider closing it. Three is pay really good attention because there may be local failures, there is something that you need to fix. Four is pay attention, that's all it says. Pay attention, not four. It doesn't mean it's unsafe, it's just like there are some areas that you have to consider for repair. That's what it means. Thank you. But uh, can you describe just a little bit about like what a person would see? Would, would they see pieces of concrete missing? Would they see, is it just a matter of paint? Uh, can you sort of just describe uh, what, when a bridge typically gets too poor, what does it appear or, or, uh, or feel like to people who are experiencing it? It's difficult to... Uh, uh describe it because as Everett mentioned, there are a lot of different components on a bridge. If one of the elements is four, even though the other part is eight or seven, it's still overall rating will be poor because of just one element. So uh, if you look at a bridge like this, there are thousands of elements. So it's very difficult to say, I could be just one side of the bridge is in bad shape. That could make it poor. Well, the rest of it is good. So it's, it's difficult to discern. You have to go to a specific bridge and read the report. 
Right now it's a four. This was a four. Yeah. So this is one of the four fours that you're you're describing earlier. Okay. One of the five. Huh? One of the five. Oh, there's five. five Five yeah. bridges that are rated Outside four. Outside of this one, we have four more. And so the higher the number, the safer the bridge. Is that the idea? Yes. I'm, I'm talking about there are four other bridges that are in poor condition with a rating of four. Right. There are no fives or there are no, no. threes. No no threes. We have, are, okay. we have no now, bridges and, below four. And the, and the bridge that collapsed was a four. It just became four. It just got downgraded just in May. It just became a four. Prior to that, it was a five. Can you explain for us the ratings of the tunnels? You say there are 15 tunnels. Is it the same kind of scale? And are there any that are, quote, in poor condition? I don't think we have that data right now, but uh, the inspection people can get back to you. Dawit Milona, B-A-W-I-T, M-U-L-U-N-E-H, Milona. Uh, Director Lott, there's several video compilations of bridges, or, uh, trucks hitting bridges all the time. They don't fall down. Do we know on the 295 pedestrian bridge, if this bridge was not in poor condition, could it have survived that hit? Do we know it, it would have gone down either way? Yeah, again, I must reiterate that this was struck by a truck going at a pretty heavy rate of speed with its lift that was elevated, and because of that is what knocked the bridge down. And a quick follow-up on that. Um, is, so has this incident spurred any change in the way DDOT is evaluating things, or are you confident in, in the process that you have in place? No, we're very confident in our, our bridge team and in our inspections and how we go about inspecting all of our bridges um, to ensure, again, the safety for all users, whether they're uh, vehicular traffic or pedestrians. Any change in the trucks that are allowed to use these vehicles? Any change in the... In the uh the trucks that are allowed to use these roadways? No. We'll provide that to you, Mark. But they're not, they're above a four. Correct. So when you say bridges, you include pedestrian bridges and vehicular bridges. The only five total that are rated four. Right, and we'll provide that to you. Thank you. Can they keep doing this for a little bit here? All right, thank you. Thank you up there.